Now picture this, the year is 2013. The survival horror genre is looking very weak compared to the quote golden years of 1996 to 2004, with games releasing such as the original Resident Evil trilogy, Silent Hill, Fatal Frame, even one that I don't see brought up anymore, which is Eternal Darkness on the GameCube. Nintendo, I beg, port that to the Switch, please. But in 2013, survival horror games were pretty scarce, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not saying that we didn't have great survival horror games here and there. Of course, you had Amnesia being the main example, but just look at horror series from the early 2000s, like Dead Space, for example. Dead Space 1 and Dead Space 2, fantastic games, turned into a co-op action game. Uh, with Dead Space 3. And let's talk about other co-op action games in Resident Evil. Resident Evil 5, Resident Evil 6, they were certainly a thing. Silent Hill had released Silent Hill Downpour, and to be honest, the less said about that, the better. But then, on March 12th, 2013, everything changed. <sighs> In just this four minute trailer, it showed a lot of what would eventually make Outlast so iconic, even to this day. Showing off the horrors that were Mount Massive Asylum, the night vision giving you that sense of fright and just nervousness. And of course, the chases that will fill you with so much adrenaline as you quickly try and break your line of sight with your pursuer and look for any hiding spot that you can find, like a locker or hiding under a bed. And just like that, Outlast was born. Chase here, Fast forward six months later to September 5th, the official launch date for the game. 14 months of hard work by just a group of 10 brilliant people. <laughs> Outlast was officially in people's hands. Now the plot of the game is very simple. You play as Miles Upshaw, a journalist who is looking for his first big scoop, and he receives an email from a whistleblower inside Mount Massive Asylum. Now, they released the Whistleblower DLC. I will touch on that in another video if you guys want me to. Smash that like button. Because the DLC in that is fantastic. And also as well, I haven't fully finished Outlast 2. So if you want me to fully finish that and do a full playthrough and then my eventual thoughts, let me know. I would like to point out as well that as when you start the game, the game very clearly tells you that you have no way of defending yourself. You literally only have a camera and you have to run, hide, or you will die. And not many games, to be honest, did that at the time, and nor since, really. Even the excellent Alien Isolation, you can feel very helpless against the alien, but you do eventually gain some ways of fighting against the alien and defending yourselves. There is none of that in Outlast. You have to run. But armed with your camera, Miles makes his way into Mount Massive Asylum, and as soon as you take your first step into the asylum, it should have been enough to get out immediately. <sighs> But even after Miles doesn't leave the asylum and walks around the empty corridors and rooms where you can clearly see that there was life here once upon a time. We squeeze through these gaps and look around for any sort of clues as to what is actually going on in this asylum. With just blood splattered all over the walls and the sound of the phone line being cut dead. Jumping out through this vent and we end up seeing our very first inmate and he utters just one word. Just a, a little, little bit of foreshadowing. We drop down from the ducks and we enter into the library. And this is your first jump scare warning. I won't be doing this for many of them because <laughs> there's some jump scares I forgot about in this game. <laughs> We walk through this dark library and all we see are just headless bodies strung upside down. And then we run into the first sign of life in this asylum that actually speaks to us. It is a security guard who has been pierced through the body. The guard tells us that the variants have escaped captivity in the asylum. And he also tells us some very key information. You can't fight them. You have to hide. 
Now, there are certain collectibles in this game that you have to capture with your camera, and these collectibles are just amazing because they offer some insight into what Miles is thinking in certain situations, with this note saying that the god was telling him to get out and then dies, and that it would have been a good thing to hear when he could actually leave the way he came. But now, unfortunately, we do have to find another way out of the asylum. We leave the library and we catch a glimpse of what dangers may be lurking around the corner. <laughs> Try and squeeze through this gap, and then... Little thing. Coming in and out of consciousness, we have our first interaction with Father Martin, and we will see him quite a lot later in the game. We eventually come around and find some security guards that have been just absolutely destroyed and our first and our objective is simple survive and escape while well, looking around the asylum we come across this inmate in a wheelchair now i have tried to look for any sort of information on this guy but i cannot find anything about him i don't know why he looks the way he does like usually certain variants have like a document like documenting like a particular variant but there's nothing on this guy that i can find progressing through the asylum we come across these gentlemen seemingly watching a static tv and fun fact there's a note in this game towards the end of the game that actually details that these guys are blind. And it's just the little, little info dumps that I really appreciate with this game. We enter into this dark room and find this key card for the security room to hopefully try and open the door to leave the asylum. While trying to make our way back to the main room, we encounter this wheelchair guy again, and he has something to say this time. Get him out! Walking around the asylum as well, you will be looking for batteries for your camera. Now, depending on the difficulty will result in how many batteries you can hold. If you play on Nightmare difficulty, you can only carry two batteries and they're a lot more scarce throughout the map. But while looking for batteries and just exploring the asylum, which is one of my favorite things to do in this game, just because there's always like little hints of like potential things that have happened in this game. And just some of the horror scenes you see are just so gruesome. <laughs> We enter the security room and try and disable the security system until Father Martin just adds some other ideas. Why do you do that to me, man? So Father Martin turns off most of the power in the asylum and now we need to go into the basement because that's everyone's favorite place to go in a horror game to turn on the backup generator and to then restart it and then turn off the security. But now we have our first taste of the hiding in this game and the guy that threw us out of that window earlier, he's now back and he's now trying to break down the door. And now we will have this gentleman hunting us throughout the game. But let's have some info on this gentleman, shall we? So this guy is Chris Walker. He's a former military policeman in the US Army. He is insanely obsessed with security protocol and he will go on just murderous rampages collecting bodies and heads <laughs> and you will find a whole slew of them throughout the game the main enemy in this game that you'll see towards the end of the game the wall rider chris is basically attempting to stop the wall rider possessing people by killing everything in sight to make sure that the wall rider has no potential host Again, more on that later on in the game, but that's his whole driving factor in this game. And the way he kills people is just so unique as well. He's not so much ripping your character's head off. He's more so grabbing your head and then tearing your body away from the head. Kind of think Homelander when he killed that, I can't remember what his name, but you, you know what I mean. After escaping Chris Walker, we go down to the basement to try and turn the generator off. The generator requires two pumps and a main breaker to be turned on before we can restart the generator. We turn on both the pumps, and now we will have our first encounter with a pursuing inmate. Now, he will attack us on site, so we have to hide under this bed. After a couple seconds in the room looking for us, he will eventually leave the room, and while looking around for the breaker to turn on, we actually run into him. I <laughs> I will never get tired of that sound of when a chase starts. You will hear that so much throughout the game and you will hear this, just the theme of being chased and each enemy has their own theme and it's, oh, the soundtrack in this game is just so good. 
We do eventually find the breaker and we turn it on and that will trigger the inmate to come into our general area. So we need to hide once again. We slowly walk down the hall and end up meeting him in the hall. We try and run away into a locker, but he is hard on our tail and just throws us back out of the locker. We also try to hide under a bed, and he's still dragging us out of a bed like a parent on their child's first day of school. We eventually do turn on the generator, however, and let's just get out of here, man. We then return to the security room and try and disable the security until this happens. I'm sorry, my son. Father Martin shows us some security cameras and shows to be what is an invisible man absolutely ruining SWAT members. And again, you'll see more of that later on in the game. A lot of questions to be answered and then we fade out. Some time passes and we seemingly wake up in a cell that has a load of crosses everywhere. Again, religion is more of a thing in Outlast 2, but it is still a thing in this game. I also find it funny how we were knocked unconscious, but they still let us keep our camera. That's kind of funny. Eventually an inmate will let us out of our cell. And just goddamn, man, this prison block just looks insane. And then we meet the twins. Now, I love the twins in this game. Not like they are, like, they're just so weird and they're so wacky. Like, they speak so calm, but the things they're talking about are just so ridiculous. Who's this? Maybe Father Martin's man. Maybe. I would like to kill him. As would I. We give him a running start. There's an idea. And when we kill him, we kill him slow. I want his tongue. And liver. They are yours. Trying to escape this prison box, we lift ourselves up here and then. Yeah. <laughs> This man is having intercourse with a headless corpse. God damn, man. <laughs> and this note from Miles just describes his place so perfectly. We eventually run into the twins again. That we did. I'd say we were more than fair. His tongue and his liver. Yours. Mine. Now, we need to, once again, find a key card. Um, we, you'll be doing this a lot in this game, finding key cards, finding keys, like turning on two different sets of things. You'll be doing it a lot in this game. And we notice Chris Walker doing some of his evil deeds against, and he also says we have to contain it, which is more fuel to him killing everyone so the wall rider doesn't get a host. Even Miles seems to hint at it, says, what if he's not the problem? What if he's trying to fix it? We reach the end of this dark corridor and we find the key card. We use this key card to get into the showers and the twins are here again stalking us. And if you get too close, they will kill you. You can hop out of this window and you can just hear the dialogue that they're saying and it's just so menacing. I really want to know why they stop pursuing you. Like what changed to where one of them says just and then they just walk off and leave us alone for pretty much the rest of the game until some time towards the end oh, this game's just so interesting man we then enter another security room and turn on this airlock and then an old friend reappears He's very easy to escape, however. You just have to jump into this vent. And when we drop down, we aren't quite in the clear just yet. We need to hurry and escape Chris Walker before we are blown through another window and fall a massive distance onto what seems like it is Chris Walker's trophy collection. If this video isn't demonetized yet, I'll be very surprised. And if it isn't demonetized yet, YouTube, please leave me alone. But now Chris Walker has dropped down again and he is pursuing us once again. So what do we have to do? Hide under a bed. Now with Chris seemingly off in the distance, we can now sneak our way around him. He almost does catch us, however, as he breaks down this gate very, very easily. And we just have to sprint and just in the nick of time, we escape Chris Walker. Going further into the prison block, we come across this scene. Blood everywhere. Wall rider sprayed multiple times on the wall. And Miles' thoughts just say that the inmates are talking about the wall rider. 
as a physical presence, like a spirit or a demon. He also mentions that he just saw something, but maybe that was just a glitch in the camera. Who knows? And now we need to go to everyone's favorite places in video games, the damn sewers. Now, the majority of you being in the sewers, you will be just evading Chris Walker. In order to advance, we need to flush to the water by turning two different valves. As I said before, you'll be doing this quite a lot in the game. We take a few steps forward and Chris drops down and now we are, <laughs> now he's pursuing us. We quickly run down this corridor and turn on one of the valves very quickly. Chris is right there to give us a right hook and we need to very quickly get out of there because one more hit and we will be dead. We managed to escape Chris by the skin of our teeth and then we turn the final valve and manage to leave the area without seeing him again. Going deeper into the sewers and as much as I don't like the sewers in this game, I just love the design and the atmosphere of the sewers in this game. Your loud footsteps just plowing through the bloody water next to the sounds of the wall rider roaming the area. God, the atmosphere in this game, man. It's just fantastic. And even in this game where the horrors quickly make it seem like there is no hope left, you can find your own humor in this game. <laughs> Now, in this very, very dark room, the, the room is filled with water and Chris Walker is actually roaming the area. And the thing that makes this so terrifying is that Chris runs at you at normal speed, even when he's in water. But of course, you run very sluggishly. So if he catches you, it actually can be very difficult to escape him, which we managed to do with just not even a second to spare. But now it's time to enter the male ward. Now, one word I can use to describe this chapter is just horrifying. We start off by seeing this text that reads fingers first then balls then tongue not quite my order but <laughs> oh my what <laughs> we end up what seems to be a hospital wing and the music just kicks in once again and it's just so eerie i love it so much after crawling through this vent and dropping down this gentleman tied to a chair alerts the other variants that we are in the area and now we're in probably one of the more memorable chases in this game just because it lasts quite a bit they try and smash down a door and as soon as we have to open this door we need to haul ass just as they're on our tail we have to leap this gap and <laughs> they have some lovely words for us you <laughs> But the chase is not quite over yet. A lot of hopping over obstacles, enter a classroom of sorts, and then eventually we find this dumbwaiter. Who's down there? You're not one of them, are you? Quick, get in the dumbwaiter if you want to live. We take a club to the back of our head for our troubles, and we just manage to get away. And now let's meet the lovely gentleman who has rescued us. Me the right chase here, buddy. This is Dr. Traeger, and he is just a charmer. Now, let's take a break, huh, buddy? You old two martini lunch? Hmm? Have a little confab. Now, tied up to a wheelchair, he takes us for a little walk up to his work area, but not before mocking us a little bit by showing us the exit. Go on, run free! <laughs> I'm in no hurry. No? All right. Now, Trigger takes us to his workstation. We have to just sit there. And so this is where the game just gets so messed up. He wheels you through his little work area and you come across this guy cuffed to a bed screaming. And Traeger says this. Probably not coming to any use anyway. Like, bro. Now he wheels us into his little work area, which is obviously a damn bathroom. What else would it be? And of course, he sets up our little camera. We try and struggle to get out of captivity. Traeger does test out a few different tools on us including cutting off our damn fingers. You bully. <laughs> you paying attention? <laughs> Don't pass that on me. There's still a lot for you to absorb. We do eventually get out of captivity and we need now we need to escape. But before we do that, let's go back a little bit. So you know how I previously mentioned that there was a note on the wall saying fingers first, then balls, then tongue. This guy was going to cut off our reproductive utensils if we didn't escape. And then you go back to the guy that's stuck in the damn bed. Just take note of where this blood location is and he has already lost his tongue. Oh man, poor guy. But now we're free and we need to escape Traeger. We open this door and look around and find this... God, this guy, is, he's chained to a bed and he just looks horrendous. Again, notice the blood location. But Traeger does eventually come into this room and offers to give him very special attention. And I'll be honest, this is probably the best thing for this guy. I'll give you very special attention. 
<laughs> Strega that goes on to check on us, and he isn't too happy that to find out that we've escaped. Fuck! Fuck, really? You aren't gonna walk on me! If there's one thing I cannot goddamn stand! It's a queer! We do manage to escape Traeger. Not for very long since this guy decides to scream and let Traeger know that where we are. But we escape into this air duct. The elevator we need to take to escape requires a key. Because of course it freaking does. Now I'm sneaking around. Somehow he doesn't see us here. I don't know how. Maybe his vision isn't that great in the dark. But we decide to make a break for it. <laughs> We drop down again and we manage to find said key, but he also finds us again, so now we need to go hide. Now at this point, I'm just sprinting. I have no idea where he is, but somehow we managed to make it to the elevator and we're free. I'm not giving up on you! We climb through the elevator and just see this hilarious sight. I can't believe that uh, while scripting, I didn't notice anything about this, but how to make Traeger juice. Step one, squeeze. It just writes itself. <laughs> We make it downstairs and actually find Father Martin once again. Now, I know this is a game and you can't do this because game. But at what point do you just put your foot or your fist through this window and climb through it? We make our way through what seems to be a mess hall uh, and it's on fire. And you actually find this variant and his story is actually really sad. Like even Miles has pity for him. We do need to turn on the sprinklers for this area, however, since the fire is blocking our way out. So let's go do that. I'm sure there's not going to be anything stopping us from doing that. Yeah, of course, we have to turn on two different valves. And while doing this objective, of course, we have everyone's favorite security guard roaming the area, and he somehow spots us immediately. <laughs> we do manage to fire one of the valves really quickly, and then I forget how to play this game because <laughs> Chris just snaps right onto me. But thankfully, we managed to evade him and find the second valve. But in doing so, that does draw him towards us. But <laughs> now we need to just turn on the sprinklers and get the hell out of here. We make it to the kitchen. And of course, that guy isn't too happy that I turned on the sprinklers. Now on to the courtyard. Now we're not going to talk too much about this chapter since not really much happens. And to be honest, you can't really see anything. We do get this little teaser of the wall rider uh, multiple times, actually. The only thing I really remember from this area is when Dashi played this game. And there's this clip where Chris scares him. Oh! Oh my god! I but just like that, we're now back inside. Again, not a lot happens in the courtyard. Now the female ward. Now I don't want to get too dark, but there's a female ward, but I don't think there's actually one female in this game yeah i don't want to dig too deep into that to be honest now to our first challenging part of this section we need this key from this from this guy who got shoved into a laundry chute but of course we need three fuses and i want to know why can't we just go the way father martin went because he clearly didn't have to go this way he clearly didn't shove this guy into a dumb waiter and take out the fuses why can't we just go that way now this section is kind of like a maze because there's so many different corridors this guy Kind of scared the hell out of me as he started running at me, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. We managed to find one of the fuses, and I just hate this so much in a good way. It's just dripping in atmosphere, and it makes you just feel so uneasy. And then, of course, this guy just scares the hell out of me. Let's play. We find another one of these fuses. That's two of them now. And now we need to get back to the laundry chute and go a different way. And, of course, this happens. <laughs> We just slam the door on his face and we go to bed. We grab the final fuse and of course, I forget the grabbing the fuses instantly makes enemies start to path towards here. And he comes and I just go back under a bed. He pops into the room and I just get out and start sprinting. We pop in the three fuses and while the chute opens, homie just decides to drop down the entire chute. So we need to go back downstairs to get it. We rush downstairs, find him just chilling. <laughs> oh, poor guy. But we finally grab the key. Making our way upstairs, and homie, who is just chilling, now decides he wants to smack us for some reason. 
And now for our next objective. Isn't that just lovely? We follow the blood to this door that slams shut, and the twins are in here for some bizarre reason. So we decide to run, we watch as they leave, but at least he's nice enough to shut one of the doors, I guess. We eventually come into this room that looks like it's fallen apart, and we need to make this jump. I'm sure nothing will go wrong here. <laughs> And we've just lost our camera and the game makes it such a big deal that you cannot advance through the darkness without your camera so now in essence we're risking our lives for a camera to be fair that's pretty much like any journalist realistically we slowly make our way through the dark corridors without our camera <laughs> Fun fact, that jump scare got me while I was scripting this video, so you guys have to experience the same scare that I just did. We do end up finding the camera all battered and bruised, and now we can look to leave. And now we're in for another chase. We need to retrace our steps and get the hell out of here. We make the same jump as before, and now we can advance through the game. Now we're returning back to the administration block. This gentleman quickly tells us that there is only one way out, and we quickly squeeze through this gap. And there's a lovely gentleman waiting for us. Thankfully, I remember from speedrunning this game years ago that if you quickly run into this office, you can very easily get past him without him seeing you. We need to screw through this vent and we notice this gentleman just chilling in the vent. I don't know how he got here. I really don't. But, but we sadly, we have to push him through. And yeah, we're back in the administration block. And this gentleman comes to tell us the Father Martin has left us a key that we have to go grab in the theater. Why couldn't you just give this gentleman said key and let me through? While exploring the theater, we have a lovely but also disturbing piano melody. And <laughs> we find the guy who's playing the piano. Like, come on, man. Like, that's just so creepy. Now we're in the theater, and what was it that Traeger said earlier about home movies? After shimmying our way across this wall, we do eventually find the key that we need. We climb down, and the door starts getting busted open, but we are able to quickly sneak past him and find our way to the locked door, and we need to follow the blood once again. Now, we are so close to finding Father Martin. We need to do some shimmying into this guy's room, and we come across to this place of worship, and we're actually greeted by the twins, and then we see Father Martin tied up to a cross. He tells us that he has fixed the elevator, so it looks like we can now leave. But not before we have to watch him get burned alive. Even Miles somehow finds humor in this. But it now looks like we have a way out, and the twins graciously let us out. But despite this, Chris Walker was not given the information that we can leave, because he isn't too keen on us leaving. So we just eat a hook, and then sprint past him and climb into this duct, and now we can take the elevator. But of course, the elevator wouldn't just take us out. Oh, no, no, no. We uh, get sent to the underground lab, which is where the wall rider is currently situated. And this is the final chapter in the game. So, we are now on the ground. We need to find another way out. And Miles just describes this so perfectly. Now, exploring the underground lab and just seeing what life was like down here before everything just went to shit is just so cool. But then seeing all the blood splattered across the walls, you just know... You just know something has gone bad down here. We get a quick glimpse of the outside world. We get so close to leaving, but the door stands shut. And we need to get the hell out of here because there's a certain ghost that's chasing us. This is the wall rider that was mentioned before. We get to this door and this gentleman is just waiting for us. Just that feeling of the main antagonist that's been terrorizing you throughout the game dying at the hands of something that makes him look just so easy and like he's nothing and now we have to contend with that bigger foe we come into this room and we find dr wernick himself basically he's the head of this entire place he runs this place but he's supposed to be dead but he's being kept alive he tells us how to kill the wall rider and says that we aren't able to escape until we do so now we have to go deal with some ghosts we walk our way through the corridors and meet billy and one of them and we just start running 
we eventually come into this room and this is where they've been running all the experiments and we actually find billy just chilling here his actual body he was being experimented on and torture. We turn this valve to turn off some of his life support. Now we have to disable this electricity for this LA sphere looking thing. And of course, Billy is now aware of what we are actually doing and now he steps up his chase for us. We need to climb what I think is the longest set of stairs I have seen in a video game. They just go on forever and then you have to make this jump which oh boy Failing this jump on insane difficulty, where you, if you die once, you go back to the beginning of the game, isn't, isn't the best, I'm not gonna lie. Man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break my monitor, I swear! We then disable the security, and now we need to return to Billy's pod to end this. We need to make this jump once again and walk down all the stairs once again. <laughs> Yeah, Billy catches us and brings us down for us. Cheers, Billy. But now we need to get to his pod. We pop our hand onto this system and it looks like Billy's dying, but his ghost is not. He absolutely destroys us. He picks us up and then seemingly goes inside us and then drops us. And now we only have one thing to do and that's escape. Camera in hand, we get to walk out. Now it, this lot, this walk is so long just because of how injured Miles is. But eventually we get to this door and we are greeted by some lovely gentlemen. And that is Outlast. It's one of my favorite games ever made. I love this game. I love playing it every time Halloween comes around because it's just so good. Like, and I'm so happy I got to play it again. And yeah, if you again, if you want me to touch on the DLC of Outlast 2 in another video, I will happily do so. Just let me know by clicking that like button. And yeah, thank you for watching me talk about Outlast for over 30 minutes. Not something I thought I'd be doing, but I'm happy I get to do it because I love this game so freaking much.